Father, once again, I would like to thank you and to give you praise for all the things that you have been doing unto us and for all the knowledge and wisdom that you are enlightening unto us, giving us a illuminations or enlightenment regarding your word. Truly, there are so many things that we need to learn from your word and as, as I study your word, I am becoming more aware of your word and becoming more uh, more accurate in uh, understanding on the study of your word. Father, I, as I deliver your, your word to the, tonight, this afternoon, I'm asking for the Holy Spirit to be the one to speak unto me and then uh, let the Holy Spirit quicken the word so that it will be planted in the hearts of everyone that would guide them and uh, give them awareness of what is happening around us through your word. Because everything has been revealed, nothing is hidden. It's only for us to study your word in order to, to see what you are planning to do in this world. Thank you, Father. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so once again, <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. And uh, actually, I'm so excited to to continue on the seven seals. Uh, we discussed last last week regarding the four horsemen. Let's have a uh, very short uh, <clears throat> study on the four horsemen. So we study about the white horse with a bow, given with a crown. So that is the common thing, and then. Uh, he is given to conquer, to co conquering and to conquer. So white, explain that white. Horse means word power, faster mobility, speaks about strength. And then bow can speak also with weapon of war, for hunting and for a lying tongue, means for deception, okay? The bow, okay? And then crown, it's a mark of a royal, red, a garland. And I show you the sample, okay, that, that is the crown that is mentioned in these revelations, not this one, the diadem that was worn by our Lord Jesus Christ. And then I give you some examples of the crown. And then conquering to conquer, both Greek word, okay. So in seven churches, these are all mentioned, the Greek word, the same thing. And one means unity and solidarity. Solidarity means uh, there is uh, when they are when, when you are in unity, then therefore you are in peace. There is a peace during that time. Okay, because white means surrender. So once you surrender, then there is peace. Okay. So I explained to you regarding Constantine, a Roman emperor who who is a sun worshiper, and then uh, when he saw the vision, okay. When he saw the vision, and then uh, by this sign you conquers. So he used that vision in order to to lead and conquer Maxentius. And then by uh, 313 AD, he declared that uh, he legalized Christianity in the entire land. So there is already peace for the church because he's trying to unite the pagan beliefs. Uh, at the same time. Is trying to unite the Christianity, so that is also a political motivation. Okay, and then so he declared Sunday as a rest day. Okay, and remember Sunday is for the pagan sun. Now um, regarding this Sunday, this has been a question. So, are, am I trying to say that? Uh, we should not worship on Sunday and we should go and worship on Saturday. First thing and foremost, I would like to tell you that uh, God made the heavens and the earth and then he made everything for six days. On, on the seventh day, he rested. Now, for the Sabbath, that is a sign for the a sign and covenant for the Jewish person. Remember when we discussed in Acts chapter 15, they are asking, uh, they, are, they are having arguments if they are going to impose Saturday uh, Sabbath rest to the Gentiles. But we did not see that. Instead, 
uh, do not pollute will serve with idols, flee from uh, sexual immorality, and then do not uh, eat drug, uh, eat blood. Simple as that. But you cannot see Sabbath. Okay? Sabbath. There is no mention as you have to follow Sabbath. No. That is a different thing. This uh, Sabbath, we are still exercising Sabbath. For example, uh, if you work for six days, you started working on on Monday, then absolutely on the seventh day will be Sunday. So if you started working on Saturday, then your seventh day will be Friday. God knows our heart. Okay, God knows our heart. We are not here to observe the signs, but instead uh, we are here to declare the word of God, the good news to people. Okay, so I explain you all these things. And Constantine wear the crown, okay, the emperor, Azareth, and then bow. They are using as a weapon of war, means he united the Roman Empire, the Eastern Empire, and the Western Empire, he united again as one, okay. And then he's expanding his territory. He uses bow for ranking. And of course, as a deception, claim to be a Christian but a son worshiper. So it fits directly on him. Okay. And then uh, why there is a uh, peace during that time because he legalized Christianity during his period. So there is a peace of Christian life during that time. So there is peace now in Christianity. Persecution of the church has been abolished. Remember, I have explained to you uh, the introduction of revelations that there is a great tribulations and persecutions of the church from the time of Nero up to the time of the Christians, up to 3, 312. They have been persecuted. But after 313, the Edict of Milan, there is a complete peace for all Christianity. And after that, 380, as we are going to discuss, he was able to uh, make a decree by <clears throat> Theodosius in Ethic of Thessalonica that officially the official religion of Roman Empire is Christianity. Okay, so horse exercise world power. They are the one having the world power right during the time, and then he is conquering, he expanding his kingdom, conquering all the. Uh, small small kingdoms and then to conquer using the sign as we are going going along with these four horses three and third and fourth horses you will see that from the time of Constantine up to this moment of time they are using the sign to conquer okay one he unified the empire politically and spiritually by incorporating Christian and pagan beliefs okay so by design for almost two millennials, the Romans continually colonizing under the ban of Christianity and establishing territory in each nation to establish world power as a white horse. That will be the same up to the end. So second horse, okay, the red horseman with the great sword, and uh, he, has, uh, he has given a great sword to, to divide, to kill, one another that is the main thing so red of course means blood sin war or also rebellion i forgot to put also that red speaks about also rebellion so uh given a great sword great sword a sword can be mentioned as a strange woman a strange woman means uh, the the church has been compromised with adultery of the worship of the uh, belief okay and then a sharp tongue okay sharp tongue means what they have said it must be done no one uh, no one can bend it okay and then it is also a weapon of warfare for the sword and then it speaks also about judgment okay so after 312 313 and 321 Okay, declared the sun worship Sunday, and then 325, the Council of Nicaea, the Nicene Creed, they finalized the statement of faith, 
and there was a division already during the time. There is a fighting between the faith of Arianism and non uh, homo homotianism. Arianism is non Trinitarian Christological doctrine, homonism is the one we believe for the Trinitarian doctrine. Okay, so this is the nice and clean. I already uh, read that, and then. Uh, during the death of Constantine, he was baptized by Eusebius, who is an Arian uh, bishop. You know, Arianism, though I don't believe in Trinitarian. So at the last minute, uh, Constantine became also a Christian. He became also a Christian during his last minute before he died. And then 380, that was the time they declared that Nicene Christianity is the official state religion of the whole roman empire okay so that is the one we discussed already so the odysseus he officially closed all empire temples and then the edict was declared and no other religion is accepted only only christianity so there is a force so there is already a division during that time. Remember, sword is used for division also, to divide. So there is already a division during that time. Uh, they divide and they are considering heretics for those people who will not accept this 19 Christianity. So Council of Ephesus and Shalzidon, we declare already for that. So that is schism. This is schism. This is what I'm trying to say that that already started that division between the Eastern and the Western Roman Empire. Okay, so even the empire has been totally um, separated. Okay, and then in 1711, the conquering of Muslim already started. Therefore, in 7th century AD, uh, that was the start of Muhammad when he established the, uh, the, the Islamic belief. Okay, and then Charlemagne united again the Roman Empire, the Western, not the Byzantine, the Eastern, and he became the father of Europe. Okay, so, uh, and but the Eastern, they already Christianizing the Russian, okay, the Russian during 945 AD. Okay, so the Great Schism started in 1054, that there's a totally separation between the Eastern Empire and the Western Empire. You can search the history that there is a Great Schism between the Roman Empire, so there's a total division. So first they are one, now they are two, because we are now on the second red, uh, the second, the red horse. Uh, the second horse, which is the red horse, and second means dual. They are divided okay that's why everything is coming directly in my eye in my eye you can when you understand the history the church history you can clearly see every single detail it points out directly without a miss so these are the reasons which are i try to these are the reasons which i try to uh, they try to divide because of the different beliefs okay so uh, one is uh, western they try to make uh, pope as the, the head of both but the eastern would like to ask that the patriarchs or bishop or bishop will be the one to be the head okay so that is one of the dispute okay okay the following is the rise of islam Okay, so now in 1184, apart from that division, there is a uh, uh, word that mentioned that you can kill one another. Kill one another. When you say kill one another, you are not killing another entity or another area or another group. You are killing within your group. So what happened when you kill one another? In 1184, Pope Lucius decreed the ad abulenda means uh, the Inquisition. They start of the Inquisitions. 
And I'm telling you, there are millions of Christians died during the Inquisition from Cathars, Waldensians, Paulations, Spanish Inquisitions. Spanish Inquisitions are the Jewish people that don't want, uh, they are trying to, to, uh, to uh, make front that they are Christian, but actually they are still practicing the Jewish traditions. Okay? And then 1453 was the fall of Byzantine, the Eastern Empire, politically, but actually they continued in Russia as uh, the Greek Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox continued in Russia. In 1520, again, there is a division happened now to the Roman Catholics. The start of the Protestantism, the Reformation. So this there is a war between Protestant and the Lutheran, and the, the Roman Catholic. So there are lots of killings also happen in this time. They are fighting each other until 1555. Okay, until 1555, it was, there is a, uh, an edict that there will be peace. But after 1618 to 1648, again, there is a 30 years war between the Protestant and Catholicism. And the cost of this is eight million. So it clearly um, fits the red horse, killing one another, dividing. Always there is a division. So there is a division from the Roman Empire. Uh, there is a fall from the Romans uh, Western. There is a fall also from the Eastern. There is a great schism dividing each other. Now from the Roman Catholicism because. Uh, politically, the Byzantine Empire collapsed, 1453. Now, the Roman Catholicism is the one in, uh, heading for the pol pol political, religious political uh, empire. And there is also a Protestant happen or, uh, that came out from Catholicism, and there is also a one. So there are lots of divisions happening, and they are fighting each other. So that really fits. So let us see again. So the red horse, it is the blood, the sin, the word power, on word power, the rebellion also, I forgot to mention, the rebellion also in red. So there is war, in uh, war, uh, fighting each other. And then they, he took peace also. He has taken the peace. Okay. So... There's no more peace for Christianity. There's no more freedom for Christianity. Christianity freedom for Christianity has been removed and must embrace uh, and embrace impose Christianity. Means the Nicene Christianity. Kill one another, as I told you. They killed one another in 1555. There is a peace treaty that they will not kill one another. But in 1618 to 1648, they continue killing one another. So this is the only history in time that fits for the killing one another. That's why my belief and interpretation for these four horsemen are very, very much accurate. Rather than the, they are telling that the first horsemen are the Islam, the, the, um, the rise of Muhammad, all these things and the different uh, leaders of Islam, they're telling like that. And they are telling that the first horseman Will, the four horsemen will happen only after the rapture, but actually it's already happening. So that is the other other's interpretation. Okay, so they have lots other interpretation for the four horsemen. They are telling that is for uh, the whole earth. That will come to that, but at this moment of time, it rightly fits on the Roman uh, Catholicism, the Roman Empire. So I am telling you. Every single word, detail, icons, or points that is mentioned on the focus man is rightly fitting on this history of our time. Okay. Now, great sword. There's a strange, strange woman. They, they, they embrace the mother God. Okay. They, they declare the Roman Catholicism. They declare that Mary is the, is God. Is the mother of God. The Immaculate Conception. The Ever Virgin. Eternal Virgin. So that is their belief. 
and they accepted that in order to have a counterfeit of the pagan's belief of the mother and child belief. Remember that mother and child started from the Babylon, the great Babylon during the time of Nimrod, where Nimrod and his mother, they had a son, but Nimrod died. When that mother had a son, he called it Tammuz, Tammuz and he declared that he is the uh, resurrected or the, the resurrection of uh, Nimrod. But anyhow, that is the mother child, mother and child starting of belief. And then sharp tongue, they they impose their strict decree that if you are not embracing nice in Christianity, then you are heretics. And when there is a division between Protestant and Roman Catholicism, they are fighting for each other for their religious freedom. So very sharp discussion regarding their belief. So there is a great schism. Uh, regarding their belief. So, weapon of warfare, 476, Western Empire collapse, and then 1573, uh, uh, fall of, uh, no, not, this is not uh, 1573, this is 1473, fall of Eastern political, but it continues in Russia. When peace of Christianity were enjoyed, then suddenly implication of freedom of Christianity has been taken out by imposing unified belief of nice and Christianity. So this is what I'm trying to say. Now we are going on the third seal. Are you ready now for the third seal? Okay. Amen. So get ready because there are lots of things that you will come to understand regarding this third horse and the fourth horse. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balance. It was not given to him. It was already in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of four beasts, a measure of wheat for a penny, a three measures of barley for a penny. And see, Thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Okay, I have research on this one. Okay, so actually, I will explain you properly. This is not the exact interpretation. I will uh, I will show you how it is. Okay, so when we see third, we know it's number three. Okay, when we say number three, the the three was mentioned in Genesis chapter 7, verse 13. In the self same day, <clears throat> same day, Noah and Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the three sons of Noah. <clears throat> so this is the three sons of Noah. And Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. So there are three sons who went inside the ark. So that is number three. Exodus chapter 19, verse 11. And bury, bury thee, and be ready against the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 11, this third day, what happened on the third day? Oh, actually, it's a third month also. If you are going to read Exodus chapter 19, verse 11, they came out already from Egypt. They stayed in Mount Sinai. While staying in Mount Sinai on the third month, the Lord told them, Take a bath, wash your clothes. He's telling them, Make your raiment clean. You should take a bath and wash your clothes and consecrate yourself on the third day. Because on the third day, I will come down to you. That is what the Lord said. Remember that our Lord Jesus Christ was resurrected on the third day. And in Exodus chapter 19, he is coming down also on the third day. On the third day. He, he did not mention that after completing the third day. So meaning, if, if first day completed, second day completed, the first minute on the third day, that is already the third day. 
you you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, for example, our timeline is based on Gregorian calendar. So our uh, time ends in 12 midnight. So the first day ends in 12 midnight. The second day ends in 12 midnight. But the second day, once it reached 12.01 a.m., that is already the third day, right? That is already the third day, okay? So what I'm trying to say that you will understand. In Luke chapter 4, verse 25, there is a famine in three years and six months. Why am I including three years and six months? Because if you are going to divide six into two, that would be three also, double three. So three, three, three. And during those three years, there's a great famine. And for us, Jonas, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, Jonas was three days and three nights. So he was in three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So uh, in the whale's belly, so shall, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So uh, during these three days and three nights, it was a tremendous suffering for Jonas because he was in the well of the belly and for our Lord because he was in hell because of that is the penalty of sin so that is three okay I would like you to remind that that, that is the third the three that the, the meaning of the three and then black that is uh, in, in, in Greek was you uh, use melas and speaks about Famine, mourning, and death. Let us see. So, in Lamentations chapter 5, verse 10, you will see these things. Our skin was black, like an oven, because of the terrible famine. If there is a terrible famine, your skin must be black. Now, tell me, in which part of the world that a terrible famine that is like that continent or that area and their skin became as black like an oven i know you know the answer okay you know the answer for that so that is black second thing execute chapter 31 verse 15 that said the Lord God, in the day that he went down to the grave, I caused a mourning. The, the Hebrew word that was used for this morning is black also. Okay? So that's why mourning is related to black. Okay? So I covered the deep for him, and I restrained the flood zero, and the great waters were stayed, and I caused Lebanon to mourn for him, and all the trees of the field fainted for him. So... This is the, the major prophet's Ezekiel's prophecy, okay? So, black related to grave and mourning. Grave means death. So, that black also means death because it's related to, to grave. When you say black related to skin, mourning, and death okay and evil of course that is part of evil that is the opposite of white black so if we say white is purity righteousness black is a different thing it is the opposite side now let's go to pair of balance actually i was shocked when i saw the greek word which is they use sokus and sogus was not just a pair of balance it was actually a yoke uh, a yoke remember what you are putting in the cattle or the cow in order to to drag the cart that is the same greek word that has been used in this pair of balance so this pair of balance the yogos a yoke it is called a bondage and slavery okay so that is the same Greek word used in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. So take my yogos upon you 
and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. So the Greek word that was used in Revelations is the same Greek word used in Matthew eleven twenty nine, which is Yogos. You could you could read right in Acts chapter fifteen verse ten, the Council of Jerusalem. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke or yugos upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers knew nor we were able to bear? So this is Peter speaking to the council that why you should put a yoke to these people and giving them a burden to follow the law of Moses, the commandments. So that is the same Greek word, okay? And in Genesis chapter 27, verse 40, and by thy sword shalt thou live. This is, uh, he is speaking to uh, Esau when uh, Isaac is giving the blessing to Esau, uh, but the, the first blessing was given already to Jacob. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt thou serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion and thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So I take this one as a yoke also. So there is a fight between Esau and Jacob. And penny is a denarion in Greek. It is a day's wage. Uh, let us read in Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 to 5. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto man. Okay. That is an householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers in his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, that's why penny is a day's wage, he sent them into his vineyard and he went out about the third hour, third hour that is nine o'clock in the morning, because the first hour is six o'clock in the morning in the Jewish timetable. So third hour, that is nine o'clock. And he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. And again, he went out about the six and nine hour. Six and nine hour, that is 12 o'clock, noontime, and then three o'clock in the afternoon. So, and did likewise. So, went out early maybe he went out around seven o'clock or eight o'clock in the morning and then nine o'clock again and then twelve o'clock and then the three o'clock in the afternoon and about the 11 hour 11 hour is five o'clock in the afternoon he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them why stand ye here all day idle they say unto him, Because no man hath iras, he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyards, and whatsoever is right, thou shalt receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. Now, eleven hour is five o'clock in the afternoon. He said to them, Okay, go, go to the vineyard, five o'clock in the afternoon. Because 6 o'clock in the afternoon, it is finished. The day is finished. So from 6 o'clock or from 7 o'clock up to 6 o'clock, that is a regular day's work during that time. So it's more than 8 hours. It's more than 9 hours. It's more than 10 hours. Let's say they started at 8. So it's already... That is 10 hours in a day. They are working 10 hours in a day. That is according to the Bible. So sometimes if we are working 8 hours, we are already complaining if we are giving extra time for our job. But actually during those periods, they are working more than 8 hours and they are paid for a penny for that 10 hours of work. That is a day's wage. That penny during that time, of course, they could buy so much. So, but what happened to this one? And when they came, they were hard about the 11th hour. They received every month a penny. 
So even a person that who is working only for one hour, he receives a penny. So, but when the first came, they suppose that they should have received more and they likewise receive everyone a penny. So when, when they, the first person who went to the vineyard, like eight o'clock in the morning, he went already in the vineyard. When he saw that person who came by five o'clock in the afternoon, he was given a penny and he is working from eight o'clock in the morning. He think of himself that he deserves more than a penny because if you have given a penny to a person that works in one hour, then therefore you should give me more. But what happened is, and when they have received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, This last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us which have borne the burden and heat of the day. Okay? So they are complaining already. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, he called them friend. He did not call them as laborers. Okay, he called them friend. So seeing uh, why I'm trying to say to this, because this is pointing out to the third horse. Even though we have laborers, we have some work to be done and we hire people. We hire them because we need them. And that's why when, when they are fulfilling the things that we need from them, we are paying them, compensating them based on the service that they have given. So it is not a type of slavery. It is an exchange of commodities. You give me service, I give you money. So it's like an exchange of commodities, like for trading. If you give me rice, I'll give you money. Since you did not give me rice, but you give me work, then I give you money. So there is no higher uh, portion and there is no lower portion. They are all equal because it is very clear here, even though he hired them, but he called them friend. I hope that is very clear to each and every one. Because this is the misinterpretation of the third horse. I do the no wrong. He's telling, I did not do anything wrong. Did not thou agree with me for a penny? Have we not have a contract that once you work for me in a day, from 8 o'clock up to 6 o'clock this, this day, you will receive a penny? So, the, the landowner or the, 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 the hire or the employer is fulfilling the contract. But sometimes people get frustrated because when they work hard, they are expecting to get more. Okay? That, is the, that is the problem with the society today. Let me start for a moment. When we work, we don't work for the company alone. We don't work simply for the company, but we are working also for the Lord. So when we did something extra, or we, when we do something uh, extra effort for the company, we should not be expecting something to reward again or be recognized of what we have done. Because the truth is, we were able to do that because of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is in our life. Our Lord is trying to teach those employees that uh, working is a gift from God. That uh, whatever extra work that we have done for our company, do not expect something in return. Let God be the one to give you in return. Let God allow uh, to reward you for all these things. And people are getting uh, frustrated because after they are working hard, working um, with, 
with, with, the, with their full effort for the company because they're expecting something okay that should not be so if you work work for the lord as if you are really working for the lord and then is it not uh okay for a penny take that thine is and go thy way i will give unto this last even as unto thee okay he's telling it is my right he's telling it's not lawful for me to do what i will with my own is thine eye evil because i am good okay so that is what i'm trying to say that uh, it is his right to do whatever he would like as long as he obeyed and followed the contract or the agreement that, that was being made now see these things so the last shall be first and the first the last remember i told you already this one in the throne room in heaven in revelation chapter 3 and um, chapter 4 and 5 that the the sapphire stone and the sardus stone the first and the last the last and the first i have told you when he is telling these things the first one that has been called to do the job for the kingdom of god was israel and they are doing their jobs okay and then the church has been called also to do the job but everyone who did their job they have been regarded the same and they are complaining israel is complaining i am doing the the law of moses i am following the commandments i am doing it following it with all my heart but why this person the gentile he is a pig eater pork eater he is eating a wild beast he is not following the sabbath he is not circumcised but still he is being saved that is telling that the first should be the last and the last will be first and not only that the first one that will be rewarded are the gent are the churches and the last one will be the israel that's why for many be called but few chosen now he's telling not hurt not oil and wine do not hurt the oil and wine so why this uh, black horse is telling not to hurt the oil and wine in psalms chapter 115 a wine that makes glad the heart of man and oil to make his pain to shine and bread which strengthen one's heart when i was uh, studying these things one thing that i have uh, read and watched in order that a man or a person will you will look younger for a longer days he must keep oil in his body the reason why the person is getting old age because the the cell was not able to produce more produce more oil in the body remember when you are young you always produce much oil in your body too much oil in your body that's why you have this younger uh, strength or the younger uh, looks so the secret in, in order to get younger for a longer longer times or days or years you have must have a rich oil or you have must have too much oil in your body if you have too much oil in your body you will tell that uh, uh, there will be lots of cholesterol i tell you that uh, that is a a hoax actually and just study about the keto diet keto diet will explain to you how to get much fats and oil in your body without damaging your body because there is a thing that has to be done for that okay so uh, that is mentioned in Psalms chapter 104, verse 15, and also Proverbs 21, 17. He that loves pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loves wine and oil 
shall not be rich. Okay, so this one, he is telling that uh, those person who is drunkards, those person who who likes to mingle, okay, to mingle, because oil is used for fragrance also. Okay, so he that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. I did not tell that the Bible tells the Bible does not. Okay, so if you love wine, you will not get rich because you will raise all your money in buying the wine, the liquor, the beer, the alcohol. And I have seen so many testimony of that. So the Bible is always correct. And those people that uh, much use on oil, uh, they are trying to put uh, something on their body, they are expanding much on their body in order to look younger. That's why their money spent to that. Exodus chapter 29 verse 14 And with the one lamb, a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of an hin of a beaten oil and the fourth part of an hin a wine for a drink of an So now this oil and wine has been part of the offering. Okay, now we are getting to the answer to the question why hurt not the oil and the wine? In Numbers chapter 18 verse 12 all the best of the oil and all the best of the wine of the wheat and of the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto the Lord, then have I given thee. So that is the reason why when God is telling them, do not hurt the oil and the wine because this is one of the offerings, important offering that has been to be offered in the sight of the Lord, the first fruits of them. Okay. So in another thing, uh, Jacob rose up early in the morning. He took up the stone. He put the pillows and set up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. This is the time when uh, uh, the battle means the the house of God, the, the ladder going up and down, the angels. So that he called the battle place. This is where he put the oil. So oil is used for anointing. So or for the light. So oil is used for the light also, and spices for anointing oil, for sweet incense. So for anointing and for light, oil is used for anointing and for light. And then Mark, Mark chapter 6 verse 13, And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil, and many that were sick and healed them. So not only for anointing, not only for beauty, not only for light, it is also used for healing. So these are the use of oil. Okay. And then for the wine and Noah, this is the first mention of the wine, drank of the wine and was drunk and he was uncovered within his hand. So this is where the first mention of wine in the Genesis. During after the flood, Noah went, is a husbandman, went to the vineyard or the plant charts, and then uh, through that grapes there is a wine so when he was drinking on that he was drunk because of that wine and then not only that in Luke chapter 10 verse 34 okay, so wine can bring drunkenness and went to him and bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine so wine is also used for healing also for example in, in one of the factories in alcohol, uh, making wine through alcohol, uh, these factories are making now alcohol, not wine, because uh, the, there's a liquor bond, liquor, liquor bond, uh, liquor bond in, in this pandemic. Uh, they are not allowed to sell any liquor, so they are converting from making uh, an alcohol wine into an alcohol for disinfectants. So wine is used also for medicine. Okay? So oil 
and wine is also used for medicine. So this is the story happened. We know that this is the last part happened in 1618 to 1648. There is a war between the Protestant and the Catholicism. So there is a division because um, the second horse means two and he has a great sword means dividing. So they are divided. Now, after that, in 1625, okay, up to 1865, actually, even up to now, there is now a slavery. There is a slavery, okay? I am trying to point out that this black horse is about slavery. Remember, when I told you that uh, their skin became as black as an oven because of farming. Mm -hmm. So where is that location? You know the answer. That's what I'm trying to point out. There, this is the slave trade. Okay? This is from Europe. This is South America. And this is North America. Okay? Now, what happened? This is the time where America is trying to organize as a country, okay? When I studied about the history of the Americans, mostly of the leaders of the Congress also during that time, because started from Jamestown, Virginia, all these coasts from this coast are the people coming from Europe also from Portuguese, Spain, Italy, all these people coming from Europe, they settled here. But some of the people, the local people are already here, the, the Indians, you know, the Indians people who are already staying here, they are already here, okay? And then this Europe, they came here and then they established this, they occupied this land and that started America. So they, they have America, North America, and they have also South America. These are all um, started from Europe. They started occupying this area, although there are some locals already in this area, some small, small tribes, some small, small ethnics, but it was um, headed by the, well, by the Congress, the same as process of the Europe, they tried to occupy this area. Then apart from this one, they occupied also the Western Africa, this part, okay, this part, okay. So we have already certain locals here, small, small tribes, and then occupied by the European uh, countries, they occupied. When they are occupying, this area, they are also bringing Christianity in this area. That's why America, the most dominant uh, religion in America is Protestantism. Okay. So they have, uh, even in this area, we have here Brazil, Salvador. So here, mix of Protestantism and Catholicism because they have been uh, colonized by the Europe. Okay, and the same time in Africa, the slave trade started from this area. What they are doing is they are bringing some um, some items to this area, and then they are bringing slaves to this area, and then to this area, and then going back again to Europe. So they are trading tobacco coffee cotton sugar mining and rice so from here this area they need laborers because they need to uh, to do tobacco coffee cotton sugar mining and rice there's a plantation happening in the area and they need people to work on this area now during that time the portuguese and spaniards went to this area remember that is 1650 in 16th century, in 1500s to 1600s, that's the time the, the Europe or the Romans started colonizing all parts of the world. The Philippines was discovered by Magellan in 1521. 1521, when 
when Philippines was discovered by Magellan. So in other parts of the world also, they are doing the same thing. Okay? So there is a slave trade happening on this area. And uh, between 1650 to 1860, approximately there are 10 to 15 million Africans that has been trade in this area. And that's the reason why there is what we call the Black Americans. Because they settled here also. They are first they were being slaves, but uh, they are fighting for the for the equality that there's no blacks and there's whites until they have won that. We'll, we'll show to that later later. That's why there is a black Americans. Now this is the history of the timeline. In 1472, Portuguese negotiated the first slave trade for the gold and ivory. So they went to Africa, they took African slaves, and then this is Spanish and Portuguese bring the Africans to the Caribbean to replace the Indians working in the gold mines. So that's where it started during that time. Okay? And then the Dutch brought slaves to the New World. The Dutch bring slaves to Jamestown, Virginia. I told you a while ago, this is where the Jamestown area. So they are bringing it here, okay? The Jamestown in Virginia. Massachusetts recognized slavery as a legal practice in 1641 body of liberties, okay? And, uh, in 1651, Rhode Island declared that a slave must be set free after serving 10 years of service. In 1663, a Virginia court established that a child of a slave is also a slave. So when a slave born a child, that child is also a slave. Now, they are Christian people. They believe in Christ. Some of them are Protestant and some of them are Roman Catholicism. Why they exercise slavery for these people? Why they exercise and when, why they are bringing the yoke to these people? They colonize the area. They colonize the, the, the place. Once they colonize the place, they are treating them as slaves. If you are going to watch the movie regarding this slave trade and slavery in Africans, you will really shake your head that how come a Christian can do such terrible things. As I mentioned ago, when, Jesus, when, when the laborers hired, uh, when the employer hired the laborers, and then when they are coming to pay their dues, he called them friend not as a slave but these people who claims to be christians who claim that they they know christ they believe that they are christians but they are treating these peoples as slaves lower to their class so they are treating them lower than their class than the, the, the their own class their type okay uh, I will skip on these things, okay? Because it will take longer time if I'm going to mention. I'm just putting that for my record. Now, slaves were treated so badly on the slave ships that about 15% of them died during the Middle East, Middle Passage, okay? So even more were killed before they left Africa when slave traders were trying to kidnap them and force them onto the slave ship. So the slave traders, they are kidnapping, kidnapping these Africans. Historians think that up to 2 million African people died during the Middle Passage. However, somewhere between 9.4 and 12 million African survives in the Middle Passage arrived in the Americas as slave. We are talking only the middle passage, okay? It's not the whole passage, it's only the middle passage. 
This is what they call also the tri triangular train. Remember, I told you this is the third horse, okay? That's why there is also a triangular train happening during this time. A triangular train demonstrates how people were reduced to commodities to be sold. So they are treating these people, the African people, the black people, as a commodity, like a, a, a things to be sold. Goods such as metal, cloth, beads, and gods went from Europe to Africa, and then slave Africans went to America and the Caribbean, and raw products such as sugar, tobacco, and cotton came back to Europe. So that's how it's all uh, running. That's why it's called triangular. Shipfuls of gold, silver, and sugar came, made regular trips to Spain and Portugal. So this is the triangular trade. Okay, the slave trade. Remember, we are on the third horse. Third horse means three, and they are using the triangular trade also. And they are using the black people, as mentioned as the black horse, and they are putting the yoke on the black uh, yeah, people, means the slavery. So it is fitting everything. And they are using the advantage of the famine of that land in order to trade them in the different parts of the of the continent in North America and South America and in Great Great Britain in Europe actually in Europe so there are Africans here Africans here Africans here this is the triangular also the other the triangular the same thing which I'm trying to tell to you so from here they are bringing guns other things to you Africa then from Africa they are bringing the slaves okay so from here, they bring pots, pans, guns, alcohol, horses to Africa. And from Africa, they're taking the slaves, bringing it to America. And then from America, Caribbean, they are bringing the sugar, cotton, rum, tobacco, and coffee back to Europe. Okay? So that's what happens on the triangular trade. And do you know that the death toll from the slave trade, the Afri African Holocaust, 60 million dead at the hands of white Christian imperialism. Emphasis on white Christians because they are blacks. And some of the black people, the Africans, they believe God. They, they, they are also Christians. But even though they are Christian and accepted Christianity in their life, they are treated as slaves. And how many deaths? That's why black means mourning, death. How many deaths? 16 million. Why? Because that is almost uh, 300 to 400 years of traveling all these black people. And those who were born also during that time of travel, and those who were killed during the the sheep when they are uh, shipping when they are in sheep and imperialism imperialism means christian imperialism you have to understand that christian imperialism christian imperialism is they are colonizing or let's say conquering one land in the name of christianity that exactly what happens. I could fully comprehend and understand that because that is the same thing that happens to the Philippines. When they went to the Philippines, they offered peace treaty by giving something to the people to accept the peace treaty. But behind all of that, they are planning to colonize the area in order to, uh, what do you call that? Uh, take all the goods of that land and bring it, bring back it to their homeland, okay? So they are colonizing. So they colonize also Africans, but they are using the sign of Christianity, the symbol of Christianity, in order to conquer. Remember, 
uh, the white horse conquering to conquer by design. So they are still using that kind of uh, things that was started in the white horse that by design you conquer. So that is what they call the Christian imperialism. So the third is the triangular trade, the slave trade. That is the third. The travel through seas and Africans are like in a waste belly. Okay, remember that third days for three days and three nights, Jonas was in the whale's belly, and our Lord Jesus Christ was at the heart of the earth. So that happens also in, in triangular trade. And also third is the world mission started by three factions. Who started? The Roman Catholics. They started colonizing. Protestants and the Reformation, they started also conquering. And the Greek Orthodox Byzantine, they I started also colonizing. So these three started colonizing. Roman Catholics is the first one who came to us, although the the southern part of the Philippines is uh, dominated only already by the Muslims. So, uh, in short, Muslim already traveled first in the Philippines, and then there are some people staying there already, who is from Malay Chinese, uh, from the Chinese people from Malay also that they already settled there until we were colonized by the Spaniards for 333 years. Then after that, during the time of Second World War, there is also the Protestants and Reformation came also to the Philippines. That is 1900s and up, 1900s until 1948, something like that. And there is a Protestant until there is a group of Protestant, Methodist, Baptist, and Baptist, all these things, they came together in that area and also spread also Christianity. So they are using the Christian imperialism in order to colonize and to control the certain area. And then the Greek Orthodox Byzantine. So these three, we are in the third holes. These three started doing the world mission. They are mobilizing. Remember, horse means mobilizing. They are mobilizing already in order to uh, spread out their agenda. Okay? Black, the African skins, they are black. Okay? They are been slave, they have been mourning unto death. Once you have been taken slave from your own country and then brought to, the, to another country, you don't have any more chance to see them again. They will consider you as already as dead because they will never see you ever again. So once that Africans was being kidnapped, they will never be seen again. So horse, they are mobilizing. There are the, the, the power, the world power. So British, Portuguese, just Dutch, Spain, Italy, and other Euro European countries, they are in that world power. Started colonizing globally Christian imperialism. Remember, during this period also, that was the time that the Japanese, there is also a missionary going to the Japanese. There's also missionaries going to China. I watched the the, in Netflix, I watched Marco Polo, that I have understood that during the time of Kublai Khan dynasty, Kublai Khan is the, the son of Genghis Khan. You know Genghis Khan, the dynasty of the Chinese. So they are the, the, the most powerful, one of the most powerful dynasty in China, and they almost conquered every part of China, and even conquering outside China. So after Genghis Khan is Kublai Khan. And during the time of Kublai Khan, there are already English missionaries in the land. And one of the famous uh, person during the time is Marco Polo. But Marco Polo is not the one Christianizing Kublai Khan. It is his father that is the one Christianizing the Chinese people in the land. So that is the story. So during this period, I'm telling you, they are already spreading their power all over the globe using the Christian imperialism. 
because uh, they are using it for a peace treaty uh, that we are here for peace but actually once they have control over you then they will um, consume you they will abuse you they will abuse everything what are the commodities and the goods of the land they will take it and then bring back to their owner. that is what is happening that is the word power during that time and the pair of balance yoke means slavery remember the africans became slave and how many people are that millions are dying millions died during the slavery and there, there is also a social class means there is already a division means in 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 the philippines i could explain more on the philippines because we were occupied by spaniards for 300 more than 330 years in in philippines when we are conquered by spain it, the the classes of the people are being classified the very top one is what they call the peninsulares the peninsulares the peninsulares are the people who are born in spain that went to philippines then after that is the insulares the insulares are the spaniards or the spaniards people that was born in the philippines pure blooded spaniards that was born in the philippines then after that Insulares, they are called there. Our next class is the mestizo. Mestizo is the mix of Spaniards and Filipinos. Then after that is the ilustrados. Ilustrados are those native Filipinos that have training, learning, studied from different parts of the world that becomes a capitalist. And then the last class, the last class is the Indio. For them is the Indian, and they consider them as the lowest class of race in the Filipino, in the Philippine settings. So they are classifying. Now in Africans, it's only it's only lord and slave. I I cannot uh, research much. I don't have much more time. But as for my side, it is only uh, the lord and the slave because they have been once you have been captured, you are already a commodity of your lords. You don't have any rights for your own anymore. So watch about the story about the grace. There's a the story about the grace, about the blacks, how they were able to survive this slavery in Americans. I'm telling you, you will cry on how they were being treated by this white Christian imperialism. You, you, you could see how they are using Christianity in order to take advantage of the slavery. Now they are telling why, what gives them license to do that. Because they are using the Bible, the, the Bible verse that they are the curse of Ham. You know that there is a curse of Ham? They are the curse of Ham and they will be a slave to their brother Japheth and Shem. That was mentioned in Genesis chapter 9, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. The curse of Ham. So they are telling that these people are the curse of Ham, so they are being punished to be as slaves because of that curse that was given to, to Ham. That is their justification. But in the sight of the Lord, there is no free, there is no bond. They are all equal in the sight of the Lord. I'm just telling you this story or these uh, teachings because it relates to the third horse. And the penny for wages during slavery, measure of weight for a single person so once you are in slavery actually they are giving you only food to eat if you are one person then they will give you one food for one person now for three measures of barley for that is for a family so if you are a family they will give you only food for family so sometimes they will eat once a day sometimes they will just eat small amount of food within a day that is the payment for their labels sometimes they don't have any clothes just watch any movies regarding about slavery you can see you can understand what i'm trying to say because i have watched some of them okay now hurt not the oil and the wine okay this is true okay 
Now, this is the price oil in 1980 to 2010 price chart, okay? So it is a very, very long list. It started in January 1980. The, the cost of oil, okay, per metric 